guys so much for being here. We have the very um, high class hashtag right here on a post-it. It's uh, hashtag 50 things. Didn't make it onto our presentation. So um, my bad. I'm going to put it right here because that looks classy. <laughs> um, so yeah, my name is Jen Mayer. And I'm going to stand back here with my, uh, my speaker's notes because they're sort of like my security blanket. Um, but I want to introduce myself and also my actually very dear friend and colleague, Misha Jacobs. And we are from a company called IDEO, which is a design and innovation firm, so not really an ad agency, although both Misha and I have worked in uh, agency life before IDEO for many, many moons. Many moons. And, uh, and a lot of the work that we do at IDEO now is about brand and about communication, so there's a lot of crossover. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today uh, to talk with you guys um, and, and lead this workshop that's all about creating change through these little micro actions that we can all do together. Um, so I want to keep my preamble short and get to the making kick-ass solutions together part like right away. So the wonderful thing about coming to a conference like this is that you get to be enraged and inspired and kind of excited all at once. And all of this is happening. And you kind of, if you're like me, you leave the conference and you're like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to change the world. It's happening today. <laughs> and then you get back to work and your inbox is just like overflowing because you've ignored your email for the entire time that you've been here. And you're late for a meeting already. And you kind of get overwhelmed by the enormity of what you actually need to do in order to make a change. But fear not. Uh, behavioral science, and actually a lot of experience, teaches us that it's totally possible to make like, monumental change if you break it down into these little micro actions. There's those things that you can do today, things that you literally start right now that can make a difference. So um, you may have seen the list of 50 things that was uh, in the program that came out of last year's conference. That's totally, that's just a start. Today, together, we're going to put you guys to work and brainstorm another 50 or more things that we can all start to do. And if one of them doesn't work out for you, you can try another, because we're going to share with each other and hear what everybody in this room came up with together. Um, so before we get started, I just wanted to kind of regroup on and what we're trying to accomplish. We're not just setting out to change the world, and it's going to be awesome because we're going to do that anyway. Um, what we're doing is creating more supportive, awesome environments, empowering women to have like, these creative lives and be wonderful creative leaders. And that, as I'm sure you've heard in, in just about every other talk here, has this amazing side benefit of empowering everybody, like men, women, children, dogs, cats, whoever shows up at the agency on that day to live a more inspired, creative, balanced, awesome life. So, um, and that eventually equals better work for our clients, which is what we want too. Um, so lest you feel discouraged and say, yeah, 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 I'm sure that is great for you. That's not going to work in my environment. I promise you that it's possible. We are living proof that it can happen. We are both agency folks. And right now, we're, we're lucky enough that we're working in uh, an environment where that kind of self-experimentation is really encouraged. So we're constantly at IDEO trying new things, eating our own dog food, and, and figuring things out on our own. Sometimes um, literally. Yeah, like we actually have worked on some projects with dog food, but that's a whole other story, <laughs> um, to, create a, to create these kinds of environments. So I know that it can be done, and I know that you guys can do it. Um, and last year, I actually gave a talk about this very topic. Um, about some of the things that we do at IDEO that help me have, uh, have a life and be more creative. And I wanted to share just like three of them from last year to get the juices flowing on kind of what we're going to think about today. So number one, and this idea is going to come back in a little bit. This is a super important one. We value collaboration over competition. So sharing knowledge is part of your job at IDEO. You do not move up the ranks if you don't help other people succeed. So this is actually from the little book of IDEO. It's one of our values, make others successful. Um, so, and your, your job performance is evaluated by how well you're helping other people. And that's a game changer, right? We talk about personal commitments, goals, and expectations. So when I lead a project, at the beginning of the project, we all sit down and we talk about stuff like office hours. When do you guys plan to get here in the morning? And when do you need to leave by? talk about personal commitments like um, 
if you have a class that you're taking, or you need to pick somebody up from school, or whatever it is, all that stuff, we get out at the beginning so that everybody knows what's going on in everybody's lives. And it's so much easier when you say, like, guys, I have to leave because I got that parent-teacher thing. Everybody knows, so it's expected. And finally, we create rituals that bring people together. So uh, we do tea time on Wednesdays. We make homemade soup on Fridays. We do audio story nights. And this sounds, on the surface, like fluffy, fluffy, nice-to-haves that doesn't really help you run a business. But this stuff is very intentionally designed because it brings people together right, to have these human conversations and spontaneous intersections of ideas, and that we can just talk to one another as human beings aside from our work. And it actually makes the work better and helps us be more supportive of one another. So with that preamble, it's going to be your turn. And Mish is going to be uh, sort of leading you through what we're going to do. But uh, you're already set up in teams. So if you're at a table, you're on a team. And we're going to brainstorm around three different topics. Um, and we'll introduce each of these topics individually. Brainstorm on those for like 10 minutes each. At the end of the entire brainstorm session, um, we'll vote on the best ideas and share them back across the groups. And hopefully at each table as well, you've got a table captain. Table captains, can you raise your hands? Awesome. Yay, these are some of our fearless leaders. Um, uh, Misha and I are going to be table captains as well. And um, oh no, Serena got kicked off to another table. All right, well, we captain my captain. Um, and, uh, and so, yes, yeah, so that's going to be it, it will guide you through the whole thing. Don't be nervous. Do, do we have one at every table? Yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, no, be these two we're covering. Yep. Oh, who does? Who else does not have a captain? Okay. Perfect. Great. Okay. I will. Be well, there. yeah. <clears throat> we'll we'll self direct yourselves. We're all self guided women here. We're. <laughs> it's. You can do it. Cool. And hey, Misha. Uh, yes. So. Um, if you don't mind being my. Um, I would love to be your man. Control. Yes. I'm going to kind of step out here. Um, so we don't have very many rules at IDEO. We're a culture of ask forgiveness, not permission. Um, but we do have these kind of um, golden rules that we follow for creating really generative brainstorms. And we do stick to them. And they really do help us make sure that we're keeping the things flowing and not rejecting ideas and really building on the ideas of others. So they should all feel relatively familiar, but it's good to kind of refresh ourselves as we dive into a brainstorm right now together. So deferred judgment, this is really about don't censor other people's ideas. The second one, encourage wild ideas. This is really about don't censor your own ideas. Um, you know, Don't self-judge before you put it out there. Just put it out there. Um, build on the ideas of others. You know, There's a nugget of idea. Uh, that might trigger something for someone else. And so you know, after you haven't censored yourself from putting the idea out there, it, you're offering something else for someone, someone to build on. It's the, it's the improv rule of yes and, basically. Um, stay focused on the topic. So save your sidebars for the bar later. Um, one conversation at a time. Uh, that's self-explanatory. Uh, be visual. This one's a little bit challenging for people that aren't art directors or aren't naturally visual, but we, and I'm, I'm one of those people, I'm not um, a naturally visual thinker, but at IDEO I've really learned to kind of push myself in that direction. And when it comes to committing an idea to a post-it, it's just a better way, even if you have to use a stick figure, of articulating your idea, forcing yourself to think through it a little bit, and then making it more shareable for other people. And plus it's going to get more votes when it goes on the board anyway. Um, and then go for quantity. So this is, we are not at all about quality at this point. We just want to get as many ideas out there as possible. And in fact, we limited this session so that um, you know, if you think about the number 50, I think there's maybe 36 to 40 people in here. Everyone is going to have one idea, at least, that comes out of this session. So um, we're all responsible for doing that together. Um, and one idea for po per post-it. So as you generate ideas, commit one idea per post-it. If we run out of post-its, let's just start using the notebook paper that we have. Hopefully. Um, you know, we can just spread it out on the table and we'll figure it out. We will go rogue. <laughs> right. So um, the next slide uh, is our first brainstorm question. So we're, do we have any questions? No peeking. Do we have any questions on the brainstorm rules? All right. Uh, so the first, um, how might we? And how might we is a term that we use at IDEO to um, kind of frame our generative brainstorm questions. They're, kind of not too specific and also not too general. They're somewhere in between, just in that sweet spot to help generate lots and lots of ideas. Um, your table captains, um, are their job is really to just help keep things moving. So um, 
you know, they'll, they'll help make sure that we stay. I'll, I'll keep us on time, and then they'll just help make sure that we're capturing ideas and getting them up on the board. So you each have a board up there, one idea per post-it, one board per table. OK, so how might we help women build confidence in their ideas and intuition? Is anyone familiar with this visual here? Did anyone see this in the press? So um, Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone are a couple. Um, they also happen to star in the Spider-Man movie together. And when they were on a press junket recently, um, Andrew Garfield was asked by a little kid, how did Spider-Man get his costume? And his response was, well, he sewed it himself. Well, I mean, sewing is kind of a feminine thing, but he was really creating you know, a very masculine costume that he sewed. And Emma Stone's response, I mean, she just sort of jumped in in a very sort of calm, um, honest way and just asked the question, feminine? How so? Um, and it really kind of caused him to, in a very public way to kind of have to justify his response. And, and actually, he came around and realized that um, you know, maybe sewing wasn't so feminine after all. <laughs> of a thing to do. So, um, so this question is really, you know, we see again and again, we've talked about it at this conference, um, you know, young women in particular in our workplaces are often timid um, of, you know, kind of putting themselves out there and, and challenging themselves, asking for opportunities and that kind of thing. Um, Emma Stone isn't one of these women. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to presenting to our clients, when it comes to uh, giving the floor to young creative women in our workplaces, how can we encourage them to push their ideas and move them forward? How can we help them do that? So just a couple quick thought starters, and then it's going to be to you to, to generate ideas. Um, one is you know, in creative briefings, in, cre in creative um, review sessions. Can we lay down some ground rules you know, that are like, you can't diss someone else's idea. Um, unless you have a generative build. You have to build on their idea. You can't just cut it down and say why it's not a good idea. Um, or ladies first, you know, maybe in creative review sessions, um, women present first. So those are some thought starters. With that, I'm going to start the clock, and I'm going to head over. We're going to head over to our teams. Awesome. And use, we're going to generate ideas. It sounds really weird, but make sure that you use your Sharpies, because it allows people to actually see on the board. I'm going to turn my microphone off here, so that could be awkward. All right, how did that feel? Enough time? Not too much time? OK, good. All right, well, we're going to take a breath for a second and move on to how might we number two out of three. OK, so mine and Jen's alter egos over here. Um, <laughs> good question. We'll figure that out. We can have a whole brainstorm on that. <laughs> well, I do have the bun. Uh, OK, so how might we encourage collaboration over competition? Um, you know, when we try to do everything ourselves, it's not only stressful, but we don't get our ideas as far along as we could when we interact together. This workshop is a perfect example. Jen couldn't have done this all by herself, so she called me in to help. Um, you know, it's multiple perspectives. At, at IDEO, we work on every project with a cross-disciplinary team, and oftentimes people that um, maybe are somewhat tangentially related, like it might be a brand strategy problem, but we bring in a, a you know, mechanical engineer, or it might be an interaction design problem, but we bring in an anthropologist or um, a food scientist you know, to kind of shake things up. And so really like looking at things from multiple perspectives helps us stretch our ideas further, helps us um, you know, see them in a new light and, and push them farther. And so you know, it's by tapping into our network, whether that's in our company or even our peer network or you know, mentors or uh, mentees that we might have had in other kind of um, walks of life. Uh, that we are able to kind of push ideas further and get them to a better place. So collaboration, it leads to better work. So a couple of uh, you know, thought starters. Um, you know, you're in that moment where you are 
you know, madly hunting on our friend Getty images, trying to find that perfect uh, way to express uh, real beauty or, um, you know, like dynamic energy or something like that. And, you know, you don't have that one more hour to spend that you know it's going to take to find that perfect image. So you put a call out to your network and you say, like, hey, photo contest, you know, Starbucks on me or, you know, free lunch or whatever for a person who can come up with the best expression of this kind of concept. So invite people in. It makes it a lot more fun anyway. Um, or, you know, what about buddying up creative teams that don't work on the same account to act as kind of sounding boards for each other on, you know, projects or assignments that they're not both working on together. Um, that way they kind of have a peer mentorship and someone to help push their ideas farther. So that's what I got. Now it's up to you. We're going to go for another 10 minutes. And uh, you might, uh, table captains, just want to label um, the how might we number one so that you know which ideas went with which. All right, let's go. Okay, deep breath, deep breath. Okay, so just to give you one more second to breathe um, before we give you the next last, how might we? Um, once we're done with this last one, we will, I'll direct us to vote. We're going to vote. That's what the dots are for. Um, and we will, each team, each team will just vote on your own set of ideas. Um, and you're choosing which nine you want to share with the rest of the group. And then we'll do a rapid fire cross share each table will go around and share their top nine ideas. And that's going to get us to 50. All right. So last one, deep breath before lunch. Um, how might we promote the value of having a life outside work? So we heard uh, Todd Henry talk about this this morning. Um, we heard Jen talk about this uh, last year up on the same stage. And we all know that you know, inspiring creative ideas takes getting out in the world, you know, not just surfing the web, not just you know, looking at magazines. Do people do that anymore, or just on our iPads? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So you know, when we get outside uh, of the world, when we look at things that don't have anything to do with our jobs, we inspire our work. We inspire ourselves to think about things in new ways. Um, we need that surprise and stimulation. We also need that chill out and relax time. So it might be inspiration that you're getting on a yoga mat, or it might be inspiration that you're getting at a museum. Uh, whatever it is, you need it. Uh, to thrive in, in your work. So um, how do we get that analogous inspiration? How do we support our teams? And how do we model that behavior to them that we need that kind of inspiration to, to thrive and to make our work better and make the work that we do for our clients better? Um, so thought starter example, if you want to just switch. Oh, by the way, that is Jen with her two dogs <laughs> on the beach. And uh, where are you? Oh. You're in Northern California. Well, I know, but the name of the beach. <laughs> well, not a naked beach. We know that. Um, OK, so. Yes, this is mine. Well, there are a lot of naked beaches in San Francisco, for those of you that aren't here. And, and you oftentimes go on a picnic and find yourself on one. I'm fully clothed, and I wear my dogs. <laughs> Uh, if you want to just switch to the last slide. So, so thought starter here is, what if we offered classes or workshops that have nothing to do with what we do every day? Um, and actually, at IDEO, we really truly do do this. Um, there was a Kaipoera workshop last week that someone taught. It's all about um, sharing skills that you happen to know with others. So um, I'm, I happen to be part of the food studio at IDEO, and we put on a beer making workshop at lunchtime, and it was literally just brown bag lunch, bring your lunch, and then taste a lot of beer and watch it being made. Um, and that's what this, this wall is here, is a skill sharing wall. And people can literally just put cards in there of like, you know, put a label on it of what they know. And then other people can say, yeah, I want to do that. I want to learn about that. So that's what I got for you. All right, let's go, 10 minutes.
All right, so it is time to vote. Um, it looks like I see a lot of great ideas up there. I heard some really exciting things as I was walking around the room, so I can't wait to hear what you have in store for us. Um, everyone has voting dots. Uh, the way this is going to work is every individual at the tables will have get three dots, so just split them up sparingly. Um, and you get to vote on three ideas. Ideally, what we'd like is three ideas as a table that you're going to share from each of the three areas, but give or take. So um, you have literally three minutes to do this voting. So this is a gut decision. Yep. You should be familiar with the ideas. Go. Here, I'll help. <laughs> yeah, just go. It's time to share. You don't need to take down your other ideas because you can see the ones that are dotted. And we're getting the wrap up. Uh, Keyboard Cat is going to play us off soon. So we're going to have okay. to make it so snappy. This team over here looks really ready to share. <laughs> so I'm going to let them go first. And um, if, uh, once you sh when you're done sharing, if you could just mark your nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, just so that. Um, these are going on the idea wall afterwards, right? So um, that will help us track that. All right, everyone listen up. We've got a team sharing. Oh, sorry. Thank you. So for um, area number one, our top choice for how to combat was fuck be back, feed forward. It's not just about what you've done. It's about what you can take with you and improve going ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, our second one uh, was gotta interrupt, kind of create the record scratch in the room in that moment to get people um, really tuned into your POV and what you're offering up. Um, and then our last was reinforce that it's okay to fail. Nothing great ever happens if, you're, if you move forward totally paralyzed by fear. So knowing that there's always room to grow. Um, did I do it justice? In our second area, our most popular was take individual names off of award shows. Mm. So it's all about the team effort and everybody, you know, that was a big one. <laughs> um, we also wanted to introduce, <laughs> introduce quarterly outings, um, again, to create that team by allowing people to get to know each other and their strengths outside of the office um, and commonalities. And then the last was change the seating. Um, one story was shared at our table where the whole dynamic is it time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the whole dynamic of the office and the department changed once people who didn't necessarily interact with each other were literally put next to each other and so it's a much improved working environment. Um, for the last area uh, the most popular was to structure chit chat into every meeting, so literally give you know 10 or 15 minutes of the meeting um, to catching up with each other. What did you do over the weekend? Again, to provide that camaraderie. Um, and then another was the idea of workout Wednesdays, was to give um, employees a chance to go to the gym before work. So the day started at 10 or so on Wednesdays, just to allow that time for themselves. Um, and then the last was be the data point, which was, you know, Allow yourself to be an expert. Don't necessarily go out and seek advice, but really lean into what you know and what you can bring to the table. All right. Hi. Uh, OK, so for our first set of ideas, um, we had the idea board. So this is about putting. Uh, sort of anonymous ideas up in public and people can kind of take them off, build on them, or um, uh, enhance them in, in different ways. And also put like thumbs up stickers on them. So like if you really like an idea, um, that's a, a kind of a key way to show support. Uh, also to send people to an improv class. This is about like, I think that was the confidence one. Or, um, and so it was... Uh, we talked about sending people to an improv class to get a little bit more confident on your feet and to um, really embrace kind of who you are and what you bring to the table. 
Okay, so for the second one, oh, uh, this was, there was an idea called Collaboration Roulette, uh, which is about every time a project is kicked off, everyone's name is kind of put into a fishbowl and pulled out, and you could be paired up with someone from HR, you can be paired up with a planner, you could be paired up with a copywriter, um, and you work with them, see what comes of it. It was inspired by meeting um, an elevator decal guy. Um, and then our other idea from that section is uh, the idea that it's not just nice to do extracurricular activities, but they should actually be required. So it's not, um, oh, I happen to do yoga every once in a while when I get out of work before 8 p.m., but it's, okay, what are you doing in your in your free time? And it becomes part of um, part of your job description and, and part of what you add to the company. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Hi. For the first question, one of our responses was have a sink or swim approach. You know, put the people that you have a lot of faith in, a lot of confidence in, throw them into the deep end and really let them shine and let them show what they're all about. Um, slightly contradictory to that, we also have this idea for kind of the other side of the spectrum, start small. Take the people that aren't as confident, that need a little nurturing and need a safer environment to thrive in, give them um, a smaller challenge that's less risky and let them shine in a different kind of environment. And the third idea here was build all women, women teams. Again, kind of giving people an opportunity to collaborate with like-minded people that they feel more comfortable sharing with. For the second question, one of our ideas was uh, measure, add collaboration to performance reviews. Um, you know, team building, your ability to work with other people, share ideas, not be competitive. I think it's really key that you talk about that at the end of the year or even more frequently um, as feedback to your employees. Another idea was shuffle. Mix up teams. Move people around. Don't let them get stagnant by always having the same neighbors and the same teammates and the same partners. Mix them up so that they get challenged in new ways and learn from different people more frequently. And whiteboard sessions, you know, when you're in meetings, instead of having one person present or one person running the computer, have everybody get out of their seats and walk up to a whiteboard and share their ideas and have everybody play a role in contributing. For the third question, we said we should have a did you know fun facts about people in the organization, totally non-work related things and things that somebody could post about other people as opposed to posting about themselves. But you know, did you know Sarah volunteers with the local government? Did you know John writes children's stories really to highlight and celebrate what people do in their free time and maybe provide encouragement for other people to you know, really focus on a hobby and, and have the, the time to dedicate to something outside of work. Having team events or team cultural events outside of your industry, doing field trips during work hours to take people to a museum or do volunteer activities and things like that. Again, just emphasizing the importance that things don't always have to be related to your work or your clients or your agency. And lastly, speak up when it's time to go. You know, we all have obligations outside of work, but we don't always feel comfortable raising our hand when a meeting gets pushed to 7 p.m. and saying, hey, I've got to go pick up the kids, or I have this obligation that I can't move, and saying, can we do this meeting another time, or can I find a backup? Just really having the confidence to raise your hand and say, I can't do that tonight. I can't stay late. Okay, so for the first category, um, one of the resp our responses was develop one-on-one -on -one training for presentation skills. Basically, don't let women suck at presenting. Um, help them and train them in the presentation skills that they may need to get the ideas across. Um, another idea was have a Toastmasters at the office. So like the Toastmasters organization to really just help women get the, the presentation skills to present effectively. For the second category, 
I think I heard this idea before over there, but it was basically mix people up, group employees by account, not department, um, so that everybody can collaborate with other people that they wouldn't naturally um, be sitting next to. And then another idea was change from I to we statement. That's a really simple thing to do. I mean, it sounds simple, but it, I think it's a really, we thought it was a really effective thing. And then um, another idea was um, assign multiple teams um, to, a, to a project. And, and we've all, you know, many of us have worked in agencies where we pit, they pit um, teams against each other. And then when the idea is chosen, the other team, you know, goes away and they might, um, it creates feelings of resentment. Um, so basically this one is when the idea is chosen, the other team helps to finish the idea. Um, for, the, for the last category, um, one of our ideas was a creativity allowance. So, you know, the allowance could go to concert tickets, cooking classes, basically anything. And every, every creative could get an allowance. Um, and another idea was everyone is encouraged to take a creative, inspirational day to go to a museum, see a concert, um, whatever, uh, any, kind of, any kind of thing that's creative, it would basically be to nurture that um, creative spirit. And then leadership should set the example, like they should use vacation time, they should leave early sometimes, and don't just say sorry for having a life outside of work. Uh, another idea was respecting non-mom activities. So not everyone has, has um, children. And um, basically, yeah, so to respect the, the people that don't have kids as well. And then, and then creatives also could earmark, earmark their one personal thing that, to achieve this week. Do you guys want have anything to add about that? Okay, so for um, number one, we had the idea of uh, trading roles. In other words, get into somebody else's skin, so then you can see that it's not that easy after all. <laughs> so it's, you know, to always be a genius in your own specialty is easier than to try and be a genius in someone else's. So it's humbling and it's a good life lesson. So um, admit when you're wrong as a leader. I think that's important. We all feel that, you know, Leaders are supposed to be completely flawless and you know strong and all that, but they're not. Not not a, a modern day leader, someone who really wants to reach out to people and feel like they can come to them. If you're too strong, nobody will come to you. So the idea of, of admitting you're wrong as a leader, it's okay. Everybody has to learn. Everybody has to grow, and that's one way of doing it. Um, and also the idea of inventive recruiting. Basically, look elsewhere. Where the, uh, places that you're not used to going to to find talent. I found a really, really great um, producer who was the mailroom guy because he used to hang around my office too much. And I said, okay, what is it we're going to do with you? <laughs> so you never know where you're going to find talent. It's the elevator guy, you know, with the sticker. So I, I think to always try and think outside the box when you're looking to recruit talent and not just be in our own little prejudice world. So nice job, team. <laughs> Second one, um, it, there are a few up here, and I'm going to mush them together because they, they, uh, they work together. So the first one that jumps out to me is never, never be too busy to listen. I think that's also very important. You can't collaborate if you're not listening. And in order to be that person that's not too busy to listen, I can't find the sweet spot on this, is... <laughs> You need to be that example. So when everybody else is like shutting down, then you need to step up and you need to say, wait, wait, let's, let's just hear it. So slow the thing down, be an example, start to listen. Uh, put people first, work second. I mean, to some degree that works. At the end of the day, we all take a paycheck because we're doing an exchange in our lives. So you know, this only goes so far, but there's a certain attitude here that you can't be good at work if you're not good at life. Um, which ends up being looking out for each other, which this is an interesting idea, which is ask peers for opinions on your work. So 
I've always loved this too. It's like you walk it around and you say, what do you think? And then you'll hear like a bunch of stuff and then listen, <laughs> listen to what people say back to you. Because probably what you'll hear is what the client's gonna trip up on. And because you haven't seen it yet because you're so in love with your own ideas, which is so easy to do. <laughs> okay, number three, the idea of promoting a life. So uh, we had double majors, so encourage people to be double majors. If you're looking for advertising to be the beginning and the end of your creativity, you're gonna have a long, hard career. <laughs> so you have to be able to feed your creativity from outside so that you can take a fresh look, a fresh approach, and also so you can constantly be reinventing yourself and changing your point of view. Uh, encourage talent by showcasing. Um, a lot of the places that I've worked at, we've had uh, you know, drama or poetry readings or encourage the musicians to be the band at the parties, um, encourage art shows, photography shows, written word, whatever it is. All those things help us to see each other in a different light. Um, I was saying that there was a person in our, my department that was like really shy and nobody really wanted to interact with him. He got up there, he did a show, it turned out that he was like this fantastic talent and everybody was talking to him the next day. It's like a wall went down because they had something to talk to him about. So there's, there's really a lot of value in having a, work, a life outside of work because it will help you to feed your creativity. So, uh, and then uh, promote those, that, those profiles on your website. In other words, have like a little corner that says what we're up to, you know, that has nothing to do with work so that you can promote people within your agency and uh, show that you know, you're multifaceted, which is always a great thing. I was just going to remind the table captains to number your nine ideas, please. One through nine. Okay, last one, last one. Power team. You guys got no, 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 no. Not fair to have us do it. <laughs> I think you want to do it. Oh, do it. Do it. <laughs> okay. really good. I think we have a couple. Can you guys hear me? Is this close enough? Um, we have a couple that kind of overlap what all you wonderful people have gathered. Um, but under the first question, we have creating a sorry jar, which everyone's guilty of saying sorry too much. Um, so we're saying, you know, maybe we put a dollar in a jar every time we say sorry that we really aren't sorry. Um, and then also forcing ourselves to say one thing in a meeting just as women and kind of backing away, not saying our thoughts, um, just forcing ourselves to get our thoughts out and let everyone hear them. And then... Did someone want to explain this one? I don't remember that. Yeah, I told you to encourage the people that you would like to be around. Oh, okay. So really just kind of mixing up where people are sitting in the room um, and putting people next to each other that wouldn't normally be next to each other. For the second question, we have um, swapping around different roles within companies um, to have people realize that jobs aren't as easy as we think we can do someone else's job better. Um, erasing the phrase, that's not my job, and letting everyone kind of put their two cents in for any sort of problem. Um, having a Skillshare day and learning from each other. Um, everyone has a talent that we might not all know about, so just kind of trading skills here and there. Then for the third question, the third question, um, we mentioned having a, almost like an out of office vacation responder for if you need to just leave for the afternoon. Um, just making sure all of your other coworkers know where you're going if you're gonna be back online at a certain time. Um, giving people permission to go or leave early or even just at five o'clock without feeling bad. Um, turning off our cell phones, email, when we go home and having people physically call you if they really need you or have an emergency rather than just relying on email and you know if we don't see that once we leave and then we have having a agency art show so displaying just anyone's outside 
skills, creativity, um, what we're doing outside of work that can kind of bring us all together and showcase our skills and talents. That's all right. Yay. So nice job, everybody. If you think about the amount of ideas and like cool stuff that we came up with together in an hour, like that's kind of incredible. So imagine like harnessing that sort of collaborative uh, activity at your own agencies or places of work to just get everybody's ideas out there. So I just want to say thanks to everybody for being willing to go along with this and, and keep those ideas coming. So congratulate yourselves. Yay. And we're going to be um, capturing all of this stuff, and it's going up on the idea wall. So you see your brilliant ideas writ large. So I think we're, we're ready for lunch, right? So yay. Thanks, everybody.